<clears throat> All right. Hey, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. We're going to be exploring Psalm 114. All right. Um, excuse me if I got a little bit of debris on me. I just come in from feeding some hay to the animals outside. Uh, let's get into some prayer and we'll check out what we've got today. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for being here with us today, Lord. We, uh, we are so grateful for our place in your arms, Lord, so grateful for our place within your kingdom, Father God, afforded us by the powerful work of the cross and the supreme love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We just want to take a minute to ask you to be with us in this, in this time in your word today, Lord, to really open our hearts to you and your wisdom and your glory, Father God. We want to ask that this not only be nourishing to us as your flock, but that it be able to reach the eyes and ears of anyone out there not yet at the foot of the cross, anyone out there thinking about making their way to the foot of the cross, anyone out there backslidden from their place at the foot of the cross, that this would speak to them, that it would beckon to them, that it would call them back into your arms, into your loving wisdom, that it, that it would welcome them, that they would feel the unrivaled embrace of your glorious love. We want to pray for a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Father God. In all seasons and in this season, Father God, we ask that you invigorate and stir that within us that allows us to, to really dive into the beauty of being intercessionary warriors and praying for others and praising you, Father God, with all that we have. We pray all of this in the righteous, holy, beautiful, and flawless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, guys, let's get into this. Like I said, we're going to be exploring Psalm 114. Again, remember that this is a section that consists of from Psalm 113 to Psalm 118, what, what is often called the Egyptian Hallel. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. Let's check it out, guys. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, my name is Rex. Jesus Christ saved me from over 20 years of heroin addiction and methamphetamine addiction. And, and more than all of that, the root cause, an addiction to self, an addiction to the flesh, an addiction to the secular. But he liberated me from all of that. Amen. It's been five years now and I am so grateful. And every day I'm still stunned with the fruit and the transformation of it all. Psalm 114, verse 1, When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. O oh, mountains that you skipped like rams, O oh, little hills like lambs. Tremble, O oh, earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. All right, guys. Let's start out, uh, uh, first off, just... Welcome to another episode. Welcome to another chance to, to grow in our understanding of God's Word, to really allow ourselves to further eschew the things of the world and to just be awash in the goodness of God in His entirety. Amen. Um, I'm so grateful, as always, to be able to share this stuff with you guys. Now, if you liked what we just read in Psalm 114, I want you to stick around for a few more minutes. It's time to go walking in the Word, all right? Let's start out with a little bit. This is from my... Archaeology Study Bible, published by uh, Crossway Presses. And I just want to share with you a couple notes here that are summarized so perfectly and succinctly that there's nothing I could really add. So, again, 113 through 118 is known in Jewish tradition as the Egyptian Hallel. Hallel meaning praise. So, the first two, 113 and 114, that we're reading today were sung before the celebration of the Passover, and the last four after it, right? As well as upon other occasions. Now, a specific note on Psalm 114. The Egyptian Hallel 
continues with a poem recalling the reaction of the sea and mountains at the Exodus and calling upon them to continue to quake at the presence of God Almighty. The emphasis on the reaction of the sea and the Jordan River to the coming of the Lord suggests to many commentators a connection with the motif of the struggle between God and the sea at creation. Now, the Septuagint, as well as the two most important Hebrew manuscripts, the Codex Aleppo and the Codex Leningrad, which are the sources of the Masoretic text most often used today, combine Psalm 114 and 115 into a single psalm or poem. Now, this has led to a long-standing debate over the relationship between these two. Although the current majority view favors their separation into two different poems as reflected in the traditional Hebrew and the English numbering. All right, guys? Now, let's get into what I have personally to share with you all today. Now, Jewish tradition ties this psalm to the eighth day of Passover, and in eight short but fittingly poignant verses, we have a description of God's theophanic, presence or his visual self-revelation amid Israel's saving liberation from Egypt leading into their time in Canaan. Now, in 114, we see how stories elicit or draw responses. What do I mean by this? Well, verse 1 and 2 is a quick story of God, while verse 3 and 4 details creation's response to said story. Verses 5 and 6 question the drawing out of this response in, in a more implied, less explicit way, while the final verses 7 through 8 become a little more explicit and provide an imperative and answer. Now, let's look at Psalm 114, verse 1. Gosh, I love you guys. Let's get into this. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, right? So amid the Old Testament, the Exodus stands as this sort of prime display of God's redemptive power. And that power is not simply left in the past. From then to today, all of the faithful can relate to this in a way. All of the faithful can relate to being aliens, strangers, pilgrims, made for something more than this, made for something beyond this locale, wherever you are, Right now watching this, wherever you are right now, with the Holy Spirit of God moving inside of you, I want you to understand that, that we can do good and great things for the kingdom of God here. We can glorify God here, but you are not made for this. We are not made for this now. We are made for something so much more. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people meant to be set aside from the world, meant to tell the world, no thanks, hands off, I'm a child of God. I don't need your debauchery. I don't need your fleshiness. I don't need your foolishness. I don't need to lean on the wisdom of man. I have something so much more. Let's look at verse 2. Judah became his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. Please understand that neither the tabernacle nor the temple drew God in. They are representative of his presence. No, the people and the place are God's sanctuary because he chose to be present with them. Amen? Let's look at verse 3, guys. Gosh, I love y'all. The sea saw it and fled, Jordan turned back. So we see this, this correlation from sea and river, right? Mountains and earth, we see that later. Jordan representing the river, right? Here, we, we have a, a personified Red Sea. The crossing of it, a sort of personal struggle, a personal conflict with the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Let's look at verse 4, guys. We don't have many today, but I think I got some good stuff to share with y'all. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. Mountains here are symbolic of power, symbolic of hardness, symbolic of endurance. But everything recognizes and bows to the Most High ultimately. And here, they shake like sheep, they tremble, they quake in, in, in the presence of such deity. Verse 5. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. What ails you, right? Here our psalmist provides an explicit questioning 
of the personified sea and mountains. There's even a degree of, I don't want to say trash talk, but there's sort of this, um, this goading almost of creation as it's in the face of the creator, right? Let's look at verse 7, guys. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. So we see this, this sort of hearkening back, this call back to the patriarchs, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, right? Um, both reverent and literal fear are in sight here. You know, for, for the faithful, there should be a, a unending degree of reverent fear in the face of God Almighty and... and Regardless of whether you choose to believe or not, when it's all said and done and one stands before the, 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 the purity and the power of God Almighty, if you don't have reverent fear, trust me, literal fear will take over. When God comes in power and in truth, when God comes in judgment, all will react fearfully as they are before the omnipotent and the eternal judgment of God Almighty. There is no escape. There is no sidestepping, amen. There is no, uh, my attorney would like to file an amendment to that adjunct, right? That's not going to work, amen. Now, if you're saved, we have the unbelievable, beautiful privilege of being joined in that moment by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Check it out, guys. Last thing I have to share with you today Let's look at verse 8, and by the way, there will be another new psalm video tomorrow looking at Psalm 115. Psalm 114, verse 8, let's go. Who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters? Are you ready? I got homework for you. Check this out, guys. Please check out Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 13, right? Check that out tonight. Let me know what you think of it tomorrow. Check it out to learn of God's provision at Kadesh. This was a show of tremendous compassion and unrivaled power. The supremacy of God in sight. The superiority of God in sight. The differentness of God fully in sight, right? Just one more thing to be so grateful for, amen. Guys, if you have not already, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel. I'd love to be able to continue to grow alongside each and every one of you as believers. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. I would love to have you hit that notification bell, and you'll get a little uh, little ding-ding every single time I drop a new video, which is three long-format videos a week, plus a brand-new YouTube short every single morning. That's ten brand-new videos a week for you from this channel, and I'd love to be able to share them with you. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, Drop them down here in the comment section. If you have a prayer request, brother, sister, I want to hear it from you. Drop it down in that comment section. If you're already a child of God and I have a good feeling many of you are, then use this comment section to tell your testimony, tell your witness, your personal uh, 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 testification to the power of God Almighty, what life was like before the cross, how you made your way to the foot of the cross, what God has done with you since then. Talk it up down there. Talk it up out there. You know, it's that season. Go and tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, all right? I love you guys so much. Father God loves you even more. I can't wait to see you tomorrow for the next video. And uh, whatever you do, man, I love you. Father God loves you even more. Go out there. Be bold. Be certain. Walk in the beautiful power of the gospel message, the eternal hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And whatever you do, remember, tell the world, hands off. I'm here to get it for God.